God bless you, people of God. I greet you all in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, in continuation with our discussion concerning um, Paul, the first apostle, I want to discuss this moment, um, the difference between the teachings of Christ and that those of Paul. Not just the teachings of Christ, but the scriptures the true scriptures, because Christ followed the pattern of God. Christ um, fulfilled the law, the commandments of God and the prophets, and that's where he aligned himself. And we also compare that with the teachings of Paul. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you enlighten us with your word, open our eye of understanding, and grant us the grace for the Lord to comprehend your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, people of God, since the Lord started giving me this revelation, each time I open my Bible on the epistles of Paul, I feel kind of hot inside me because I begin to unveil his lies inside. Because just as he said that um, if the truth of God abound through my lies, why do you judge me as a sinner? So Paul now telling everybody that he is lying or that um, being crafty, I caught you with disease. Telling you that it is just through craftiness and lies that he has caught the people. But the point is that it's more serious than we look at it. In Isaiah 28, God warned his people that because they refused to believe the truth that he was going to send them and they they put themselves under the refuge of lies, that the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies, that they believe they have made covenant with hell. So, the more I research the scriptures, I continue to understand that Paul was an antichrist. You don't have to believe me, you just have to search the scriptures. Because the word of God says, search the scriptures, for in them you think that you have the word of life. Jesus said that the scriptures speak of him. So search the scriptures. If you doubt me, search the scriptures by yourself. Um, Jeremiah 6, 16 says, Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. So rejecting the words of Jesus, and abiding to the... You will understand that there is so much difference. We are going to go into that. So we know that um, in John chapter 8, 31 to 32, Jesus said, then said Jesus to those Jews who believe him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If you continue in my word, not in Paul's word, if you continue in my word, because the word, the word of God Jesus was speaking, we we'll find out all these things, you know, the source of his knowledge. So, John 7, 7, Jesus said, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, or whether I speak of myself. And in John 14, 21, he said, He that had my commandment, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. So, in... Um, 1423 he said if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him i will come unto him and make our board with him even in that um john 14 when jesus was speaking to his disciples it looked it, look, it sounded like a, it sounded like a comforting words you know he, he at one point he said that they saw satan i think something about the antichrist coming or something like that. I don't want to go into that because I, I, I can't get it exactly what he said there, but it's like he was giving them a hint that the son of perdition was coming. And um, and he was asking them to abide. You know, there are many places he said something like that. And when he said that Satan, he saw Satan fall from the sky, you know, say, like a lightning. Now, the word of God made it clear to us that False prophets have come, they come, God allowed them to come to test us. 
they, they, they allow them to come to test us. Uh, in Revelation chapter 2, so we are asked to test them. You know, in Deuteronomy, okay, before I go to Revelation, Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 4, so if there arise among you a prophet, a dreamer of dreams, and give thee a sign on a wonder, and the sign of the wonder come to pass, whereof I speak of thee. Let us go, and then he said, Let us go after other gods which thou had not known. Let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know what whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave to him. You must obey his voice, you must keep his commandment. So, when Paul went to Ephesus and he began to teach his heresies, um, the word of God said that there was a trial in Ephesus and it, a trial came up and they found out that Paul was preaching something different from what they were taught to preach. If you um, look at um, Acts, I think Acts 15, the letters, the apostles in Jerusalem, the elders, they circulate, they have a standard teaching that must be taught to all the churches. So they send these things. And one of the things they say is that the, that the law and the prophets must be read every Sabbath. Every Sabbath, the law and the prophets must be read. And they also ask them to keep themselves away from idol, not to eat anything strangled, not to eat blood. And... Um, it, they give them, you know, things they should avoid and things they should continue. And then, um, excuse me a second, please. My computer wants to go down. The things they must avoid and the things... There was a standard given to them. But the efficient brethren, when they listened to Paul, and they saw that he was preaching things that were not in line with what they were asked to believe or that from the things circulated then they put Paul on trial and they rejected him that's why Jesus commended the efficient brethren that for rejecting Paul Jesus commended them for rejecting Paul um, let's you know read the standard of the message that was given to them Acts 15 Okay, from verse 20, Acts 15, But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols, from pollution of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time had in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogue every Sabbath. So, the standard preaching that the apostles in Jerusalem gave to churches was that the people, they must teach them, to take themselves away from idols, from fornication, from things strangled, and um, from blood, from eating blood. And that the, um, the law and the prophet must be read every Sabbath, or the commandments of God must be read every Sabbath. But Paul was not doing this. He was not preaching according to the requirement. So the efficient brethren put him on trial, and they rejected him and they threw him out of the city. So, it's at a point, there's a, something, I think to Timothy, he said that all in Asia rejected me. That was after Jesus commended the efficient brethren for rejecting Paul. He, the letters circulated all the Asia. And um, after the, the comment, in Jesus warning all the Asians, the seven churches in Asia, he sent them letters because of the, nonsense that Paul was preaching to them and then all Asia rejected Paul because he was asking them to remove themselves from the law of God. God's law is our is a covenant. Now, let us go into the teachings of Paul and compare it to the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
we, we need to understand that false prophet, they prophesy in the name of the Lord. So these are the, they perform signs and wonders. They prophesy in the name of the Lord. But God allow them to come and test us. And Jesus gave all these signs, you know, all these signs. And before I go into that, let me read one more thing that um, First John said. said, little children, it is a time. And I still have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now, are there many Antichrists where we know them? Rabbi, we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. They went out from us. They will come to the brethren, like Paul and his people. They came to Jerusalem. They went from us, but they are not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all, all of us. Paul disparaged apostles a lot. That whatever it is that they, they don't add anything to him. Okay, and then you know, um and then um that somewhere in that first John he said that those people, those false uh the prof the um the Antichrist that they say any spirit that anyone that said that Jesus did not come from come in the flesh, that they that is an antichrist. And any spirit that said that Jesus came in the flesh is of God. So Paul, meeting Jesus on the way to Damascus, not physically. Okay, Jesus already left anyway. We, Jesus already left. And he said that you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And the two the angels that came from heaven when Jesus left said, This same Jesus whom you see live will come again in the same manner you see him go. And the word of God said that every eye shall see him. You know, so Paul seeing Jesus in the wilderness and all that stuff, it is not working. You know, because Jesus already said it. That if, you, if they tell you that I'm in the wilderness, don't believe them. You know, and because every eye will see him. He said it. So anyone that tells you, that's why um, First John said that any spirit that tells you that Christ did not come in the flesh, the Christ came in the spirit, that you should not believe them. Okay. Now, another thing we have to also note here, that Paul, in all his preachings, he said, um, the followers of me, even as I'm also of Christ, that is First uh, Corinthians 11.1, 1. Wherefore I beseech you, be followers of me, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own, but the profit of them, that they may say, bread them, be followers of me, that is Philippians 3.17, be followers, and mark them which walk so, so as you have us for an example. Be followers of me, imitate me. That's what Paul said. Who has said imitate me? Jesus. Jesus, um, in Matthew, in Matthew eight twenty two, he said, "Follow me." And when he was picking his apostles, always follow me, follow me, follow me. And then uh, Matthew nineteen twenty one, Jesus said unto him, "If thou wilt be perfect, go sell all that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt be have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me." So Jesus is saying, "Follow me." Paul is saying, "Follow me." But are they preaching the same thing? No. So Paul is saying, "Follow me." Jesus is saying, "Follow me." You know, and Paul claimed that he is imitating Christ, that you should follow him, even if he is imitating Christ. The ultimate person to follow is Jesus Himself, not Paul. Because we have the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. And the same word is given to us in writing. And he said, follow me. So what you have to do is to follow, to study the word of God, the commandments of God, and follow. Because that's what Jesus did. You know, studying the commandments of God, studying the law of God and the prophets. Because Moses wrote of him, the prophets prophesied of him. We study these things and understand him because, so that we can walk as he walked. Not to follow Paul. Now let us do the comparison of Jesus and Paul doctrine. I know that introduction was long. Um, so, number one, on the summary of the whole law, on the summary of the whole law, Paul said that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Galatians 5.14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, that's what Paul said. Say, all the law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself well what did jesus say in matthew 22 37 to 40 say jesus said thou shalt love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and the great commandment and second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two 
command on these two commandments hang on the law and the prophets on these two hang all the commandments both the law and the prophets that is matthew 22 30 uh, 7 to 40. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. If we go to the sacrificial system, under the sacrificial system, you know, when animal is going to be, was going to be sacrificed, they will call the animal, bring out all the fat portions, the heart, the lung, all the inner, all those inner things, and they will sacrifice, and they will burn them at the altar of the brazen altar of sacrifice, and the smoke of it will rise to God as a sweet smelling sacrifice. So burning all the all these lungs, all the kidneys, everything inside are laid on the brazen altar and they are burnt with fire. So we shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might. That's what the word of God said. And then the second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. But Paul said that the whole law is one thing. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Just love your neighbor as yourself. And then in, I think it is in Romans 1, 8, he said that the law is fulfilled in one word, love your neighbor as yourself. He's not including love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with, we are not to add, we are not to subtract. So, now, concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ, concerning the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, the Lord Jesus said that it is written in Revelation, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. They also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. In Matthew 24, 30, the Lord said, And they shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and they shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And in Matthew 26, for thou shalt say, nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of the glory. Okay. Again, let, let me just keep putting Jesus. And then he says, Son of Man coming in the clouds. Okay, okay. that's uh, Matthew, Mark. In the Acts chapter 1, um, Chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. And when he had spoken these things, why they beheld, and he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And why they looked steadfastly toward the heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus, which you see taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. That's every eye shall see him. And then, in Matthew 25, Jesus said, he gave details of his judgment. He said that when he come, he will sit on the throne of his glory. That is the throne of David. Because the word of God said that God, the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. That throne is on the earth. So Jesus will sit upon the throne of David. And all nations shall come before him. As we, the, so when the Son of Man, that is, let's read, uh, Matthew 25, 31 to 40. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate from one another. He will separate as a shepherd divided the sheep and the goats. He shall set the sheep in his right hand, but the goat. So, there will be a judgment of separating the sheep and the goats. I'm not going to go through all that. So, there will be a judgment. If you want to read it, you can read it from Matthew 25. Um... 25 31 to 46 but that's not what Paul is saying you know Jesus saying he will judge the earth separating the sheep and the goat is in agreement with um, Ezekiel chapter 34 when God said I will judge between the cattle and cattle the fat cattle and the fat you know all those I will judge between this and the sheep and the goat so Jesus was speaking in line with what was prophesied about the judgment of God. So everything, the Bible of God said that every word of God is fulfilled in Christ. It's, every word of God is in him, yea and amen. Okay, yea and amen. Jesus was saying, speaking in Ezekiel, um, was repeating what the word of God said, that God will separate the sheep and the goats. And the fat cattle, he will judge between the cattle and cattle, fat cattle and the lean cattle. You know, so... That's what Jesus is saying here, that he will separate between the sheep and the goat. Now, Paul, concerning the second coming, that's why the whole, 
There is so much confusion about the second coming. What we know about is rapture. That's then personally, I have always wondered. Okay, where will the second coming? What's the difference between second coming and rapture? You know, people have been asking that question. What's the difference between second coming and you know, some people say we'll be raptured first and then there will be second coming? I don't know. I don't know. But now that I have understood Paul, let's cancel our Paul because. Let's take just the word of Jesus. Because Paul is preaching things that do not and that are not in line with what, what Jesus is saying. So Paul in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh let me read from 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's what Paul said. I say, then 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52 said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at that last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And then there will be rapture. And we will all go to the clouds and meet the Lord. That's what Paul preaches. And that has been a lot of confusion. So is there going to be a rapture? That's not what the Bible is saying from the words of Jesus. I'm not speaking from my word. Jesus said that he will come and every eye shall see him and people will begin to mourn. Some people will ask the mountain, follow me. If you read it in the, in the prophets, yes, the prophets also prophesied it. And people will say, mountain, follow me. Some people will hide in caves. Some people will hide in caves, but people will say, mountain, fall on us. And because they cannot stand before the face of him that is standing on the cloud for them. Every eye shall see him, people will mourn. Those who pierce him and all the kingdoms of earth shall well because of him. That's what the Bible said. It is clear. Not that we shall just, then, you know, this twinkle of an eye rapture of him and no one will see us. And then there will be disappearances. That's not what the Bible says. Every eye shall see him. And then he will sit when he comes because the earth is the Lord. He will sit on his throne. The throne of David is on the earth. He will sit on the throne and then he will start separating the sheep and the goat because all nations, the whole world will come before Jesus. It is the final thing. And then he will start judgment right there. And then the wicked he will cast into fire. You know, that's exactly what the word of God said. So, now, let us talk about the time of the coming. I am comparing the teachings of Paul, the teachings of Jesus, because there's so much confusion in the, the whole thing. Here, Jesus will say, the law is... I remember when I was um, in the university, and um, some, some people, a group of people came to my roommate. They attended my roommate's um, matriculation ceremony. And one of them was a pastor. And she asked me to preach to these people that they came from. So I sat down and started preaching. Then I said, no, no, that God, can, that God has um, abolished his law. The man said, uh-uh. God did not abolish his law. The law was fulfilled in Christ. I became ashamed of myself. And that day on the, um, uh, in the Facebook, I said that Lord, God did not abolish his law. Many people started calling me heresy. Then I will go to the word of Jesus and pick from the word of Jesus where he said that heaven and earth shall pass away, not even a job. Somebody will preach Christ is the end of the law. You know, that the writing has been abolished, blotting out every handwriting of what that is written against us. Uh -uh. I will preach, I will put the quote, we are all quoting, all of us are quoting scriptures, but they said that we, we are contradicting them ourselves and they are calling me heretic. Then when I say, that we are not supposed to eat everything, that there are things that we should not eat. That Then they will pray, present the apostle that the earth is the laws, you can eat anything. In fact, there are things that are preached, that are being preached, um, um, things that are lined up in the scripture, but people, when you come to this eating of everything, they will say that Jesus said, it's not what enters a mind that shall uh, pollute him. But Jesus was talking about eating with a washed hand, following the tradition of the elders who accused him that he was not obeying the tradition of the elders. The Pharisees made tradition out of the word of God and they accused Jesus and his disciples of eating with unwashed hand. 
you know, not following the tradition of the elders. And Jesus asked them, he said to them, by your tradition, you make void the commandments of God. It is not God that asked them to, you must eat with, um, it is a ceremonial washing of hands, not because your hand is dirty. You see, so, um, so some people say, well, we should eat everything because Jesus, that's not what Jesus said. He said there that by your tradition, you have made void the command. So in that place, he was saying that conclusion is that eating with washed hand or no washed hand does not make somebody unclean. That's why Jesus accused him of cleaning the outside of the cup and leaving the inside. And then they will say that in, in Acts of the Apostles that um, God said, Peter, arise, eat, kill, and eat that uh, what uh, um, what God has done, don't call unclean. Read that chapter again. God was talking about inclusion of the Gentile nations into the kingdom. It's not about food. Okay. If it is about food, why did Jesus have to talk about, complain about eating food meant a uh, sacrifice to idols? Okay. Now let's continue. On the time of the coming of the Lord, in Romans 13, 12, Paul said, The night is far gone, the day is at hand. But Jesus said, Take heed that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, The time is at hand. He said, Do not go after them. You know, Paul said, Not all of us will sleep. You know, that the trump will come and we that are alive will be caught up, you know, that not all of us, they are dead anyway. Now, now let's talk about the source of truth. How does Jesus get his own teaching? And how does Paul get his own teaching? John 14, 10, Jesus, believers thou that, that, believers not, thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the world's sake. He said that the word that I speak, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. Um, in John 12, 49-50, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. So Jesus is saying that all these things, is, he's just doing what God asked him to do. He's not speaking of himself. He's not speaking by himself. He, it is not his gospel. It is the gospel that God gave him. It is the commandment that God gave him that he's speaking. And then he, when they accuse him, he said that if you have believed Moses, you would have believed me. For Moses wrote of me. So, in John 6, it is the spirit that quickened and the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. So, what Jesus has is the word of life. That's why Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast words of internal life. You have word of internal life. It is the word of internal life. The commandment of God is life. The commandment of God is word of internal life. Jesus said, my doctrine is not mine, but he that sent me. Jesus said that the doctrine that he was preaching was not his own. It is the doctrine of him that sent me. Jesus was preaching the, 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 the gospel of the kingdom. Then in John 17, 14, and 17, he said, I have given them thy word, sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. But let's look at what Paul is saying. How does Paul get the source of his teaching? Where did Paul get what he's preaching? First Corinthians 2, 13, and we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who possess the Spirit. For I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1, um, 12, say that the teachings he was teaching came from the revelation. If you read Paul, he said that he was in the wilderness of Arabia, and Jesus taught him by revelation. But remember that in First John this four one said that if they say that um, that whoever tells you that Christ came in the spirit that it is an antichrist that you know but you the spirit that we tell that Christ came in the flesh is of Christ you know and Jesus said that you will not see me until you say you know um, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord so all these secrets Jesus appearing to Paul in secret. 
um, John, first John said it is spirit of an antichrist. So Paul is saying in Galatians 1, 6, 17, 1, 16 to 17, he said, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the brethren. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. Now, if Paul was a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, what he would do is, if Jesus had met with Paul according to him, he would have sent him straight to Jerusalem, to the apostles in Jerusalem, to be discipled of, of him, to disciple him, you know, to teach him the Christ, because he was persecuting Christians. So when he got born again, according to him, he would have gone to the apostles and learned from them. Not go to the wilderness and Jesus now began to impart rev by revelation, impart teachings by revelation. And those teachings he said that Jesus imparted to him by revelation. We are contradicting the teachings of Christ. Christ said that Moses wrote of him. So Christ was in line with the commandments of God. He said that the commandments of God they are spirit and they are life. So now, Jesus would have sent him to Jerusalem and we would have been disciples. So Paul was not discipled. When he said he's converted, he was not discipled. That's number one. We didn't hear of him baptizing because the word of God talks about Jesus said that, you know, repentance and, you know, said something about baptism. Jesus pointed out that one of the things we should do is baptism. Baptism was an, is an ordinance. It's an ordinance. So repentance and um, baptism, all that stuff. Okay. So another thing that um, Paul, according to Acts 9, 20 to 21, Paul said, according to Acts, that when he, this is another thing entirely, that when he met with Jesus, straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the son of God. He just straight away, he just got born again, and he straight away, he didn't know anything about Christ, he was not discipled, straight away he started preaching. And all that he had him, had him, they are amazed. It's not this, he destroyed them, that called the name of Jerusalem and other stuff. Okay. Straight away he started preaching. And to Galatians he said he went to the wilderness of Arabia. He did not confer with flesh and blood. So which one are we believing? There's another account also uh, of after the conversion story. So his conversion story and after the conversion, his conversion story had three different stories. His after the conversion story also had three different stories. First he went, to, he did not confer with flesh and blood. He went straight to the wilderness of Arabia and started preaching. And then after many years, he came now to Jerusalem. I spent only 15 days. And he's telling us that he had nothing to do with the apostles. They did not disciple him. And in fact, he disparaged the apostles so much, belittled them, that they had nothing to him, that he, is, he also is an apostle. Anyway, so behold, I told you before. Now, Jesus has said, behold, I told you before. Wherefore, if they say unto you, behold, he is in desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the son of the coming of the Son of God be. Every eye shall see him. That's what Jesus said. So all this secret seeing of Jesus and revelation, that's not what Jesus said. That's why um John first John said that any spirit that said that Jesus they saw Jesus in the spirit, that we should not believe it. That and you will know. And Jesus said, if they tell you I'm in the wilderness, and this is Paul saying that Jesus came to him in the wilderness and taught him what he was preaching. Except that those things he was preaching were not in line with the word of God. Now, on the God of the dead, Jesus said, now he is not, Luke 20, 38, now he is not God of the dead, but of the living. You know, even people, you know, Christ, Christ has internal life, in Christ is internal life. So whether somebody is dead or alive, is our life in Christ. Whether somebody is out of this earth or alive, as long as you are in Christ, you are in Christ, you are alive. But Paul said, for to this end, Romans 14, um, 14, 9, for to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. He's contradicting Christ. Now, concerning mercy, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 7, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. But Paul, Romans 9.15, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy and do my will. I will have compassion and will I will. So it depends not on man's will or exertion, but upon 
God who shows mercy. So then, he has mercy upon whosoever he will, and he hardens the heart of whosoever he will. Paul quoted Moses. But God, in that very revelation he gave to Moses, the Lord said that he will by no means clear the, guilt, the guilty. God said, I will have mercy on whom I will. Jesus, who said that he came to fulfill the law, brought the law to the brim, explained everything, that blessed are the, the people that God will have mercy on are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, Paul picked that and said, it doesn't matter what you do. God will have mercy on whom he will. He will have compassion. It's not because of your work of righteousness or whatever, whatever. It's not because even that you have mercy. God will have... I, the reason I have to point this scripture is, Many wicked people, which I know personally, I have encountered, use this scripture. They do wickedness, like you say, God have mercy on me, God have mercy on me, God have mercy on me, God have mercy on me. And then they are doing wicked things, and God will have mercy on whom he will. It doesn't matter what you have done. God will have, that's what Paul is saying here. It does not matter. It's not because you will it. It's not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. It is of God that showeth mercy. So the, nothing you will do. Just as he said, nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. But he did not tell you that you can separate yourself from the love of my rejecting Jesus. Yes, nothing can separate us from the love. But if you reject Jesus, you can separate yourself from the love of God. If you reject Jesus, you will separate yourself from the love of God. Okay. So we know that. So now concerning forgiveness of trespasses. Forgiveness. Now let me stress a little bit on that mercy. We see that uh, David and Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 51. David said, God have mercy on me. When um, he sinned against Uriah, killed Uriah and took his wife. He said, God have mercy on me according to your loving kindness. Did God have mercy on David? Well, he did. But he punished David. Just as Nathan said that Saul will not depart from your family, Saul did not depart from David's family. Saul, he did not have mercy on Uriah. Saul did not depart from David's family. Even his wives, his women, Absalom slept with his women in the presence of all Israel. His son, Tam um, son, raped his daughter, Tamar. And ad um, adultery Fornication, incest, sword, we are on the throne of on the house of David. Because of that sin he committed with the rare. He cried for mercy. So can we now see that it is not just it doesn't matter what you have done and not done, that God will have mercy on you. God said he will never clear the guilty. For God said, I will not justify the wicked. God said he will not justify the wicked. So just as Paul said that we are justified freely by grace, God said, I will not justify the wicked. So it's not just grace, you are just justified. So you don't need to keep the law. It's a gift of God, lest anybody should boast. Lest anybody should boast. Okay, let's continue. Now let's move to another one. Forgiveness of trespasses. Now forgiveness of sins. Jesus said, if you, that is Matthew 6, 14, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. That's what Jesus said. So you might be born again, you might be spiritual, but if you don't forgive people, Jesus said that God will not forgive you. Just as he said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That's why Jesus said, whatever you desire that all men should do to you, do also unto them. Do it unto them. Now, so, he declared that if we do not forgive our neighbor, so there was a parable. There was a parable that was taught, Jesus taught about two debtors. One owed his master very big money, or uh, very something big. And um, the master said, got him, put him into prison, da, da, da. He cried and said, Master, have mercy on me. The man had mercy. But when he saw his fellow servant, a fellow of him, who was, who owed him something little, he went and 
The man pleaded, he said, no. He cast the man into prison. I beat him and cut him to prison. And when his master heard it, he said, you wicked fellow. I forgive you. You did not forgive your master. So in the same way, that is what God will do to those who refuse to forgive one another. You know, they will be thrown into outer darkness where men shall be, where there will be gnashing of teeth. Now, let us talk about forgiveness from on Paul's perspective. Ephesians 1, 7 said, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. According to the grace of God, we are all forgiven. Well, yes, God forgave us because of the blood. But then, the forgiveness I just read about the word of Jesus, Jesus is that you have also have to forgive one another. Forgiveness, you also have to keep God's commandment. Jesus preached the law plus grace. That's why I said grace and truth came through Jesus. Grace and truth. Truth is the law. Jesus preached the truth and the grace. Paul preached just grace. Grace. So, in Romans 4, 25, it says, Who was put to death for our trans trespasses and raised us for justification? Raised us for his justification. Now, let's talk about justification. So, Paul had preached that just grace. Say, um, we are justified freely by his grace. We are justified freely by his grace. And um, they are justified by the grace as a gift through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus Christ. Freely by his grace. For as we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works. A man is justified, that is uh, Romans 3, um, 28 said, For we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. See, therefore, we are now justified by his blood. Much as shall we be saved from wrath. Now, let us see what the word of God said concerning this justification. James 2.24 said, You see then how that by works a man is justified both by faith and by works of the law. So, what um, if we read uh, everything here, James is saying, um, Paul presented Abraham that Abraham was justified by faith alone, not by works. That if it is by works, that it is a debt is paying. So it is just by faith alone. Now, James said, oh, vain man, there was not Abraham when he sacrificed his son that God justified him. So um, James is saying that it is by faith plus works that God justified Abraham, not just by faith. Faith without works. It's like, I remember God speaking to me directly when I was doing my youth service. That was 1989. I was crying to God to give me money. God asked me, have you paid your tithe? Okay. Then he reminded me that faith without work is dead. Do something. Do something. Okay. So, because if you pay tithe, God will rebuke the devourer. And he will open windows for you. That's what God said. Remember, the law is not abolished. So, Jesus said, for by your words you will be justified. Matthew 12, 37. By your words you will be justified and by your words you shall be condemned. So we are not just justified by grace alone. Oh, I think Paul is saying, by the works of the Lord shall no flesh be justified. That's Paul. That's not. But that no one is justified by law in the sight of God is evident. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. And he called the law of God cause, said that Christ has redeemed us, that is Galatians 3, 31, that, 13, that God has risen from the cause of the law. Now, let's talk about how to be saved. How to be saved. We have been following Paul. Paul gave us his doctrine, and we've been preaching his doctrine. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart, you shall be saved. So, Jesus come into my heart, I believe in my heart, I confess with my heart, and then I'm saved. And then Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you shall be saved, and your family. Not only you, just believe in Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your family. Can we just look at that scripture anyway? Let's just look at that scripture because so that it won't be like I'm just speaking my own word. Say, believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved and your family. Acts 16.31 Say believe The word believe 
just believe on me. Believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. And your house shall be saved. Well, let's go. Let's see what Jesus said anyway. That is Paul. You have to believe. Just believe. You don't need to do anything. Just believe and then it's okay. Over. In John chapter 3, verse 3 to 5, Jesus said, I said, I said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, water here represents the word of God. You know, water, water here, apart from the baptism, baptism, you know, is a, a, a symbol of being dead and resurrected with Christ. Now, the word, water here means the word of God. So, Water clean what Jesus is cleansing. So the word of God is the water that that's why Jesus said in I think in John 17 17 said sanctify them by your truth. The word is truth. The more you study the word of God, it sanctifies you. The word of God cleanses. That's why um David said, How can a man how can a, a, a man cleanse his way by how can a, a man keep cleans his way by keeping it according to your word? Because the word of God works like water that washes us, you know. So so Jesus said, except a man be born by water and of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom. The Holy Spirit uses the word to wash us inside. That's how he gave us the Holy Spirit. Now, James chapter 1 verse 8, he said, Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we being a first fruit of his creatures. So Jesus, we are begotten of God by the word of God. The word of God, not just believe on me. You have to know the word of God. You have to study the word of God. Like Jesus said to um when the um what's that the the young ruler said what shall i do to enter the kingdom of god jesus said how do you read you know keep the commandments keep it going if you want to enter life you keep the commandment you shall not steal you shall not do this that's what jesus said to the young ruler keep the commandments so because the if you walk with the word of god the commandments of god you are walking in the way and then the lord cleanses you with the, that's that is born again first peter 1 to say believe blessed be the god the father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and um being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever first peter 1 23 so first John 2 29 says, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that with righteousness is born of him. The word of God, the righteousness of God is revealing his, his law, his commandments. So and that's and Jesus is the righteousness, and Jesus is the word of God. So if you say you know Jesus and you remove his law, the commandment, the word of God, you don't know him. You have to be married to God. Through his law. That's what God did at the uh, foot of the mountain of God. In the mountain set at Mount Sinai. When he married Israel through his law. There was a blood covenant there. And he spread. And Israel said all that the Lord said we will do. When Israel stopped doing the will of God. Or keeping the commandments of God. They divorced themselves from God. God divorced them because they divorced themselves. So the way to be married to Christ is to be married to his word. That is how we are married to Christ. We are not married by fictitious Jesus that has no commandments. We have to go in line with the word of God. And as we know that Jesus did not subtract anything from the word. He said that heaven and earth will pass away. Not even a jot will pass away. Now Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness, from all your idols. And I will cleanse you. A new heart will I see, see how the born again is through the word of God. Then, as you study the word of God, the word of God will cleanse you, and then God will give you a new heart. A new heart will I also give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart from your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk on my in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgment and do them. You shall do them. Shall do my judgment. So that's what Jesus is saying that you have to be born again of the water and the spirit. The spirit of God must come in, and the word of God must come in in your born again. It is not believe only as Paul said. Okay, now in 
Romans 10, 8 to 11, Paul, Paul said, The word is mighty even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay. Paul was putting Moses. I'm not going to go into that so that you know for time sake. Paul was quoting Moses. But that quotation was not Moses was talking about the commandments of God. He said, You will not say who will go to the heaven and bring it down to us, or who will go to the underneath and bring it to us. That the word, the commandments of God, is here, is in your mouth, it's near you. That's why God said. You shall keep the word in the midst of your heart, in your eye. Keep your commandment of God. Write them, wear them on your, wear them on your fingers. God said, wear his commandment on your fingers. Keep it in the midst of your eye. Be diligent in keeping the commandments of God. Write them on your walls. Keep them before your eyes. Write them on your wall. God said, make the commandment your priority. That's what God said. That's why Moses said, the word is near you, your mouth and your heart. The commandments of God. Paul now said, oh, the word is near your mouth. Paul is misquoting, you know, that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and shall believe in his heart, that shall be saved. Jesus said that some will say, Lord, Lord, in your name we did this. Remember, Paul is saying, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. But Jesus is saying, some will say, Lord, Lord, in your name we did this. In your name we did that. That is Matthew 7. And he will say, depart from you, workers of iniquity. So it is not uh, those who call me Lord, Lord, shall enter heaven. It's not just those who call me Lord, Lord, but those who do the will of the Father, which is, which is in heaven. And he said, enter through the narrow gate. Paul is preaching the wide gate here. You know, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus believes in your heart, you shall be saved. And he even said that, you know, everything Paul is saying, he's saying, you're just... We, are, we have freedom, we have freedom, don't trouble yourself, just believe in that you and your family will be saved. And he even said that that a husband is sanctified by the wife, believing wife. An unbelieving husband is sanctified by the believing wife. The unbelieving wife is sanctified by the believing husband. It's not, um, um, somewhere God said that um, the soul that sin it shall die. The soul that sin it shall die. A son will not pay the price of, uh, let me just paraphrase it, use my own word. A son will not pay the price of his father's sin. A father will not do that of the son. The soul that sin it, that soul shall die. But Paul is saying, believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved and your family. That's not the word of God. That's not. You are responsible for yourself. You are responsible for what you do. So, that is um on that level so in uh romans 8 23 paul said and not only the creation but we as we we have the first fruits of the spirit grown in word as we wait for adoption of sons the redemption of our bodies we wait for the adoption the redemption of our body to redeem those who we are under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons Galatians 4 5 to redeem those under the law so that we might receive the adoption of sons. What makes us sons of God actually is that is the law of God because God covenanted unto us to become his sons under the law. And then he made a new covenant as God said, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And that new covenant is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So to become a child of God, you have to go through the blood of Jesus. In the... um. The time of Moses, it was through the blood of the animals without blemish. Now, the blood of Jesus that has made us sons of God, that has reconciled us to God as the sons of God. But Paul is now saying that God, you know, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive the adoption of sons. We are already sons through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are sons of God. That's why he said, beloved now we are sons of God. It does not matter, um, beloved, we are the sons of God. It has not yet appeared what we shall be, but when we shall see him, we shall, we shall be as he is. Because we shall see him as he is. And so we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. So, 
we are sons of God. Paul is saying that it is through redeeming us that from under the law that we are the sons of God. The law is Christ. Christ is the law. He is the letters of the law. Moses wrote of me. Okay. Now, on the cost of internal life, let's talk about the cost of what will it cost you to enter life? Paul said, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is dead, but the free gift of God is internal life in Christ Jesus. <sighs> Jesus said, Matthew 19, 29 says, everyone who has left houses and brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and inherit internal life. Luke 1428, for which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost? You must count the cost. It's not just free gifts like that. Count the cost. Whether he has enough to complete it. For therefore, whosoever of you does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. For says all to follow me. Even when God called Abraham, he asked him to leave his people. Forsake everybody. Follow me. That's how God called Abraham. He went with Lot. It was until he left Lot that he became God confirmed his covenant with Abraham. Lot was a distraction. God does not want distraction. You see, when God called Elisha, Elijah came and threw his mantle on him. Elisha said, let me go face and bury my parents. That's what Elisha was saying. Um, I will follow you, but at least let me um, wait until my parents die, and I will take care of them, then I will follow you. And I just said, go now, if that is what your problem is. What have I done to you? So immediately, Elisha gave out, he knew that he had to follow immediately. He gave away everything he had and follow Elijah. You know, and follow Elijah. That's why Jesus said that if anyone will come after me, he will deny himself. He will deny himself. Carry his cross and follow me. So, the man that said, if I, Lord, I want to follow you, but let, let me go and bury, bury this is Matthew 8, 22. Um, I want to bury my parents first. Jesus said, he that puts his hand, he said, follow me, let the dead bury themselves. Who are the dead bury themselves? If you have not rejected, if anybody that does not have Christ, is a dead person already, let them bury themselves. Follow me. You see? So, it calls you to enter heaven. That's why Jesus said that a rich man, that a rich man to enter heaven is like putting a needle in the eye. It is like, is it the eye of a needle? It is like um, something about the eye of a needle. Passing through the eye of a needle. Something like that. It is like passing through the eye of a needle. Eye of a needle is a place in Jerusalem, very small. When the camel come, they have to stop and bend down. They have to lower themselves to enter. That's a gate in Jerusalem. That they have to lower themselves. They have to stop, carefully lower themselves very well to enter. So Jesus said, that's how, what it will take a rich man to enter heaven. Because, and then Jesus told the rich young ruler, go, sell everything, give to the poor, follow me, and you will have, you have treasure in heaven. The man was sad. So, <clears throat> what does it cost you to enter heaven? To be a disciple, forsake all and follow. I'm not saying, anyway, I'm just doing the word of Jesus. Say that whosoever loves his life will lose it. And whosoever loves loses his life will find it. That reminds me. That reminds me. You know, um, since the Lord called me, one of the things that has really confused me, has really confused me, is why the Lord refused me to do a secular job. And that has been a bone of contention, both in my marriage and... Um, with my children. So, each time I, even when we are suffering, God still will not allow me to take up a job. So, one of the trials we go through as disciples of Jesus and as um, followers of Jesus 
is that we must forsake all to follow him. He will give, it's not that he will not leave, it's not, he said that you will leave father, mother, and everything, houses, to follow him. We have double in this life and in the world to come. So, but yes, what Jesus is trying to say is, do not love the world, nor the things of the world. Don't cleave to them. Cleave to me. Let me provide for you. I will provide for you. So that you should not worry about what you eat, what you drink, anything. Just follow me. So we say that Paul was doing a tent making preaching. So when people wanted to condemn me for preaching full time, they would say that Paul was a tent maker preacher. The pattern of God in the Old Testament, what we call it, is that, because the law is the pattern of the new, is that the priests of the Lord will leave their job. God said there is no, do not give the priests of God inheritance in Israel. I am their inheritance. So the Levites were not allowed to work secular jobs. They were to serve the Lord. They were to serve the Lord full time. And then the Lord will feed him themselves. The Lord, I am their inheritance. So you cannot cliff the world. You cannot cliff. So these are the to count the cost. Count the cost. Whosoever has left houses and sisters or father and mother, children and lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life and will now inherit eternal life. If you don't want to leave these things, Personally, it has cost me so much. I just, it has cost me so much. My calling has cost me a lot. A lot. A lot. I don't even know where to begin, but that's okay. Even my children had to leave me. So, and that is the cost. That is part of the cost. That is a part of the cost. So Paul is saying to you that the what Jesus said in the free gift of God is internal life. Internal life will cost you. Will cost you. That's why Jesus says strive to enter through the narrow gate. Because many will try to enter, they cannot. So it is not free will. As we are looking at it. Now let us go to the next point. On what is honorable among men. What is an honorable among men? Jesus said in Luke 16, 15, but he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your heart. For what is exalted among men is abomination in the sight of God. That is Luke 16, 15. Woe to you when men speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. Woe to you if men, all men will speak good of you. Because they spoke well of false prophets. Let us see what Paul talks about the honor. Second Corinthians eight twenty one. For we aim at what is honorable, not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of men. This is Paul speaking. We aim at something honorable in the sight of God, also in the sight of men. Romans twelve seventeen. Repent no one evil for evil, but take out for that is noble in the sight of all men. He who Romans 14, 18, he was thus serves Christ acceptable to God and approved by men. That is lie. He who serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. Hello? Did they, did, did they approve Jesus? Many people, if you, I mean, those who follow Christ already will know that you will suffer persecution. Jesus said, if they hated me, they will hate you. They called Jesus that he was possessed with Bezebub. So, whatever is, Paul said that whatever is honorable among men, do things honorable among them. Oof. 1 Corinthians 10, 33. Just as I try to please all men in everything, I do. Not seeking my own advantage, but that many, that many may be saved. That's why Paul said, I am all things to all men, to the Jews and the Jew. And to, the, to those under the law, I'm under the law. To those not under the law, I'm not under the law. I'm all things to all men. All things are permissible to me. Free will, salvation. Do whatever you like. Eat, if you go to the unbelievers' feast, eat food meant to idols. 
eat. Don't ask questions. Whatever is in market, buy, eat. Do things that will please men. Now let us talk about dying. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I protest, brethren, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die every day. Paul is always praising himself anyway. The word of God says, let not your mouth praise you. Let, let another praise you. You know, it's always boasting. Jesus said in John 11, 26, whosoever, shall, whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I mentioned it earlier that in Christ, whether somebody is dead or alive, whether somebody is, has ceased breathing here, in Christ is eternal life. So in Christ, all are alive. That's why he said, um, God is not God of the dead or the living, because for Abraham was I am. And then he said that God is the God of the living. Abraham might have stopped breathing here, but Abraham is alive with God. So those who are caught up from Christ. That's why Jesus said, let the dead bury themselves. Those who are caught up from Christ are already dead. They are dead. They are walking cops. The only time somebody comes to life is when somebody gives life to Christ. Because in Christ is life. Christ is life. In him is life. And the life is the light of the world. So without Christ, somebody is already dead. It's a matter of time. Now concerning judgment, Paul says in Romans 2.12, all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. Jesus, um, John said, he who rejects me. In John chapter 12, God, verse, four, verse 48, the Lord said, He who rejects me and does not receive my saying as a judge, the word that I have spoken will be his judge on the last day. It's the word of God that will judge us. When we present ourselves before God on the last day or after this life, the word of God will become the judgment. The testimony of Jesus, the law of God, is the standard of the judgment. So, what did Paul say again? All who have sinned without the law will be per we perish without the law. <laughs> All who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. That's why some people say, don't keep the law because if you're going to keep the law, we keep everything. You'll be judged that way. So just believe and forget about the law so that you'll not be judged by the law. You'll be judged by the law anyway. You'll be judged by the law. Jesus is preaching the law. And he said that the word I preach will be your judgment. So the commandment and eternal life, Saul said, the commandment and if you commandment and eternal life. Paul said, I was once alive. That's Romans 7 9. I was once alive apart from the law. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. The very commandment which promised life proved to be dead to me. Hello? That God's commandment killed him. That he died because of God's commandment. Well, let's see what Jesus said. Matthew 19, 17. Why do you ask me about what is good? One there is who he is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandment. Matthew 19, 17, if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. But Paul said that the commandment brought death to him. He was alive without God's law. Paul was alive without God's law. Hello? Without Jesus, that Paul was alive. Without the word of God. New Testament not written anywhere. This New Testament is just full of Paul. 13 or 14 uh, epistles. Paul said he was alive without, so when the commandment of God came, he died. When was Paul born? The commandment of God has been on from even in the garden. God created Adam and Eve and gave them commandments. He said, keep until the garden. I have changed them. You know, they have to worship. They have to keep unclean things out of the garden. Till and keep the garden. God gave them commandment. Don't eat this fruit. Eat every tree from every tree. But that's what... Commandment. Now, Abraham, God said that Abraham will bear his charge. Commandments. Commandments of God have been there. It was through Moses that God had to bring it out. Because he had now had found a nation of Israel. He has found the nation he was looking for. So he gave them the commandment generally. The commandment of God is a blessing. 
The commandment of God is life. Jesus said in John 6, 63, It is the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. So the word of God will not kill you. Paul said that when the commandment came, he died. He, he, he was alive before, but when the commandment came, he died. But Paul was a Pharisee anyway. So was it when he was a Pharisee living with the living of the Pharisees that he was alive? Because he said he kept the law of the Pharisees to the letter. So, and the Bible, Jesus called the law of the Pharisees a yoke. A yoke they bind in, in Matthew 23. A yoke they bind and put on people's neck. And they, they shut the kingdom of God. They are standing on the door. They are not entering. They are not letting people to enter. They bind the yoke and place on people's neck in the name of commandments. And Paul said, that one did not bother Paul. He was alive. But when the law of Christ, the law of truth, the Jesus, the truth came, Paul died. John 6, 68, 68, Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? I have the words of eternal life. John 12, 56, and, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Who say, if John, that's John 12, 50. And I know that his commandment is everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. That's Jesus speaking. Um, God said that he gave his people his commandments. By which if a man, a man keep, he shall, he shall live by it. Jesus said to the tempter, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Our life depends on the word of God, by the commandments of God, by the law of God. That man shall not live by the bread. That's why um, if you read some 119, you will see a lot of things that David had to say concerning the law of God. It's a lamp unto my feet. I will talk about the commandment of God anyway. We will talk about it. I'm going to make a separate video concerning the blessings that are in the commandments. Jesus, if you want to live, keep the commandments. To enter life, keep the commandment. But Paul said he killed him. So we keep saying that Paul is not speaking what Jesus will speak. Meanwhile, he was not even discipled by the apostles. Minister Fathering. Matthew 23, 9 And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. That's what Jesus said. One is your father which is in heaven. You have only one father. But Paul said, For though, 1 Corinthians 4, 15, For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers? For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Philemon 1, 10, I beseech thee for, for my son. Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Jesus said what? Call no man your father. I remember, you know, as I was considering my ministry in the early 2000s, oh, in the around 90s, and then, you know, I was bothered about this fathering thing. Even when I was going to become a bishop, the College of Bishops in America came to me and said, in Maryland came to me and said, who is your spiritual father? Who is your mentor? They were presenting to me the ordinances of men, the commandments of men. I remember nineteen like something when the, when I mentioned to one pastor about my calling, uh, the pastor said, "But you have to submit yourself under a ministry, under a father, something." Like that. Right there, the Lord said to me, "I am your father. I am your mentor. Submit to me." So, one day on the Facebook, that was 2010 or 2011, somebody met me on the, um, was chatting with me. And he, as he was chatting with me, he said, he was speaking from prophecy or from revelation. The things he was saying actually were true. So, but he said to me as a, a mentor, as a father, I have come. The moment he mentioned that word, Suddenly, God opened my eyes. I saw that I was actually in the cloud. In this, I realized that I was actually in the... I was like somebody living in heaven. I saw the, a heavy chain. A heavy chain, the kind of chain you used to chain the door. Big chain, this heavy chain. Was tied around my shoulder, on my neck, and my everything. And I was drawn down 
and I saw myself hit a roof of a house. Boom! With those chains. Chain, like the chain drove me, bam! And I hit the roof. The man said, I am your camera, your father, as a mentor. The moment he said that, I was drawn down with a chain and I hit the roof. You see that um, many people, that is being in bondage. Because God said, Jesus said, call no man your father. So, all of you that are in the ministry, my son in the ministry, see how people are going about fighting for their fathers. When they should be fighting for the word of God. When they should be fighting for Christ. They're fighting for their fathers. Their father, their father, their father. And that puts those people... Jesus even said, call no man your teacher. For you have one teacher, one master. Call no man your master, your rabbi. For you have only one master. And that master is Christ. It's the word of God. The word of God is our teacher. The word of God, that's why David said, your testimonies are my counselor. The word of God is your teacher. It's your counselor. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. The word of God says that the Holy Spirit will lead us to all truth. People have abandoned the word of God, abandoned Christ, and cleave themselves unto men. When God said to me that, when God asked me, talk to me about Bishop, I was scared because of what people will say. Because first of all, the Lord first of all said to me that I have become an apostle. That was in 2009. And the, when the Lord called me an apostle, the prophecy came in one program we went, one breakfast program, where the Lord, the Lord has been speaking to me about another level in ministry that he had placed me. Then, and I kept wondering, what is another level in ministry? Then we went to a program, and the, the Lord asked me to give an offering. I needed to have a program, personally, and I was going to have a program, my own program, and um, the Lord asked me to give the offering in my bag. Everything I had there, give it to them. I was like, huh? I need money for my program. The Lord said, give it to them. I said, I had this money in my hand and was, how can I just give this money? How can I just give this money? Then, as soon as I obeyed God and placed that, went to their, this thing. As soon as I obeyed God, first of all, before I obeyed God, I had not even placed it. Even in my heart, I, I just said, okay, let me go and just obey God and put this money there. Even though I needed money, let me just obey God. As soon as I did that, I mean, I made up my mind. The preacher and one woman came to me straight, straight to me, and called me out and said, what do you do? I said, my minister. Said, God is raising it another level in ministry. Then I dropped the money on the table. I didn't know what level the Lord was leading me. He said, God is leading to the highest level in the ministry. I said, what? Another high level. Then, as I was doing my, my pro program, preparing my program, as I was preparing my program, the Lord, uh, now, um, somebody who saw my flyer called me on the phone because my phone number was there. And started speaking to me. I said, I don't know who you are, but the Lord is placing the mantle of apostleship on your on you. I said, is that the level? Apostle? Who is an apostle? You know, so, and then he started telling me what will follow the that apostle, apostle thing. You know, and that was when the Lord opened to, for me, um, mission work. Um, to start on the mission work. So, I said, I think they're talking about having father, 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 father. People keep saying, who is your father? Who is your father? The bishop, the bishop came to me. Those bishops came to me. We went to know who mentored you since you were, you know, for 10, at least for 10 years. And was your father for 10 years? Oh, oh. I was born under the ministry of Assemblies of God. That's number one. I've been following the Lord. Before I entered university, I was teacher. I, I was teaching in the, um, what I mean is, I was a Sunday school teacher. I was you know, one of the Sunday school instructors, our teacher, you know. And then, I, I'm i not saying I'm a teacher. I'm not taking that office of a teacher. I'm just saying I'm a Sunday school teacher. Okay. And then I have been, so when I was, throughout the time, when I was, I've been ministering under the ministry of Assemblies of God. So, if you're talking about mentorship, all the pastors that 
Mental means something is wrong. We are mental then. So the way we look at things is not the way God looks at things. I have been under, I also worked in children evangelism ministry for one year. I served with them one year in which the Lord now gave me released to me the grace for the um children ministry. And I have written a lot of books on children ministry and the you know about children and Sunday school children works workbooks and all that stuff. Uh, youth ministry teaching on um, books. So when you are talking about if you go calling to you don't have to have a father, follow God. So God has been taking me step by step, step by step. So when I came to America, the Lord now asked me to he forbade me from working again and he asked me to write the book. The first book I wrote was How Do We Invest in Our Children? He asked me to write that book. And when I wrote that book, the book started going making waves, radio stations. My name was all over the air, you know, because the teachings I taught there was, I just I was, as the Lord led me. So my ministry kept going one step after another, one step after another, with no fathering. All this fathering, mentoring. Mm -mm. I was only following, even till the Lord said that I was apostle, I was only following the Lord's direction. And yet, I wasn't even know I was in the ministry. Honestly, I didn't even know. When the church calls me, I'll go and preach and come back. I didn't even know I was in the ministry. I was not conscious of it. Times they would call me on book event. I would go carry my book and go there. And many people say, hey, you have written something that they taught us when we were children. Why don't you? Hey, 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 this book. They love it. How do we invest in our children? Now, so it's not about fathering. So during the bishop thing, they really bothered me and they tried to stop me from being a bishop. But because the Lord, I was following the Lord's instruction, I ended up succeeded in being a bishop. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Qualify. So what I just want to say there is not just talking about myself. I'm just trying to say that it's not about somebody about ministerial fathering, father, father, my father in the ministry, my mother in the ministry. It's not about that. It's about Jesus said that you have one father. That father has a written scroll. Jesus said in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I came to do your will. Jesus was mentored by the word of God. Jesus was mentored by the word of God. He was, he studied the law. He studied the prophet. He studied Psalms. He studied them until he, this word became him. He became, because he came as a man. And he, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. So everyone has a volume of a book written of him. If the person that is saying that is your spiritual father does not know what is written in the volume of your book, the volume of your book is inside you. It's only when you follow the Lord, the Holy Spirit, that this volume of your book will be opening small, small before you. And you are following. But the person you call your father does not know. He has his own volume of book. He is fulfilling. So he might tell you, like, you know, when I went to Nigeria, after my bishopric. Okay, one time, I, one bishop was telling me what I should do and I should not do. What I should do, what I should not do. And um, before the Lord brought me into that archbishop thing, I had a dream. We are... I, I, after training pastors and uh, and training, if I don't operate on that level, I cannot explain the fullness of His presence in my life, of His grace in my life. I have to operate, I have to accept it. It was difficult for me to accept. So one bishop called me in Nigeria and told me that I must drop it. I must drop it. And he told me everything he would do for me. If only I can. I said, why is it important to you that I should drop? The mantle that God gave me. And you do this, you do that, you do that. I no, 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 no. I don't understand. You see, that bishop, I didn't, I was, I just, he all became my friend because we use his, um, we use his church to do, I use his church to train my pastors and those people in apostles and prophets ministry. So I became convinced, I became friendly with him. But he was not my father or whatever. He didn't even make me a bishop. Nothing. Was, but now he is now mandating me to drop the mantle that God placed upon me. You see, God does not do things based on... It is the volume of the book written of me, not written of him, not written of you. Not, 
fathering. God is your father. Jesus is your teacher, master. The word of God is your teacher, your master. Follow him. Jesus said, follow me. Follow him. Now let us um continue. So on qualified internal life, Paul says, so that as a sin reigned in, in death, grace also might reign through righteousness and to internal life through Christ. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say unto you, he who hears my word and believes me, who sent me, has internal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. He who hears my word and believes me, who sent me. That is, we talked about this internal life, after the inter internal life. About if you forsake, you have to forsake your brother, father, this, that, 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 count the cost. And he says, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me, he has in time, he passed from death unto life, shall not pass through judgment. Now, now let's talk about the destiny of creation. Romans 8, 21, Paul said, because the creation itself will be set free from his bondage to decay and obtain his glorious liberty of the children of God. Because the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain glorious liberty. That the creation will obtain glorious liberty of the children of God. We will be set free from the bondage. Jesus says in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away. Peter said this present heaven and earth we see here, they have been stored for fire. They will be rolled away like a mat. It will pass away. And then there will be a new heaven and a new earth coming down like a bride, new Jerusalem descend. So, this earth, this place is not going to obtain glorious liberty. It is, God will take it away and put in new. That's what he's saying. So, in that way, again, Paul differs from Jesus. Now, concerning the prophet and the law, Paul said, for Christ is the end of the law, that everyone who has faith may be justified. They have faith, justified. Christ is the end of the law. Paul said that the law was crucified with Christ. He said, blotting away every hundred of ordinances against us and nailed them to the cross. Paul said that the law has been nailed to the cross. Christ is the end of the law. No more law. So, have faith. Faith in who? How do you have faith without the word of God? The law. Have faith in who? On nothing. Then that's why James called Paul a vain man. A vain man. Faith without work is death. How faith in what? No law. Christ is the end of the law. The law. Well, Jesus said, Think not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, the heaven and past it pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Now Isaiah 2, 2 to 3 said, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come and let us go to the mountain of to the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the Lord and the word of God from Jerusalem. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. So if it is abolished, why is it? The law of God is what is going to rule the whole world. God's law is a standard law for the whole world. So this law is not abolished. Christ is not the end of the law. Christ himself is the law. And Christ will be the king of the whole universe. And Christ's law is the governing law over all the earth. Period. The law is not abolished. Okay, now, Paul talked about um, God has appointed some apostles, teachers, prophets, and all those uh, evangelists and uh, teachers and pastors. The area I had problem earlier was teacher. And then before I saw, Jesus said, call no man teacher. Because a pastor is also a shepherd. A pastor cannot, a pastor is supposed to teach. If you're a pastor, what are you doing? You're a shepherd. And God said to the shepherd, feed my flocks. So if you're a teacher, you feed my flocks. So it's, I think it's everything is, without apostle, everything is shepherding. And that's why God said, I will give them one shepherd. 
one shepherd, even David, my servant. One shepherd. Everywhere. I have other sheep of the other, which is, I would bring them and bring them under one shepherd. Entirely. Apostle, prophet, pastor, everyone will come under one. It is everything is gone, brought everything together under one shepherd. That's why he said, Call no man, but you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brethren. Now, on the number to be saved, let's see, be wise in your own cause. If I want to be, that's Romans 11 to 5. I want you to understand this mystery, brethren, a hardening has come upon Israel until the number of Gentiles come in. And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion, will banish ungodliness from Jacob. Oh, that's not what the word of God said, though. That's misquoting. He said, and all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. That's not what the scripture said, though. God said, let me check what God said. There's somewhere God said that God will turn ungodliness from Jacob. Ungodliness from those. The deliverer will come from Zion and he will turn ungodliness from those. Let me just, let, let's Google it. Let's look for it. The deliverer will come from Zion, let's see if I can get it. Paul was quoting something from somewhere, but you know, the word of God always says a remnant shall be saved. Isaiah 59 20. Isaiah 59 20. Isaiah 59 20. Isaiah 59 20. Let's see. Isaiah 59:20 And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob said the Lord the Redeemer will come from will come they come to Zion and the Redeemer will come unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob that turn it didn't say all Israel will be saved It is all Israel shall be saved. Uh, let me see. See? Romans 11, 26. Let me read Paul again. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. No. It is a who turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is all Israel shall be saved. Say, the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from their translation in Jacob, said the Lord. You see, there are places God said, I will bring, I will cut off to Ted, and I will take one Ted, and I will pass them through fire. The purify, you know, and he says something about, you know, that he will sit on the, refin the refiner's fire, purifying the sons of Levi. So that the offering of Levi will be accepted, something like that. So, God did not say He will save all Israel. That is wrong. He said that the Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who will who will turn from their transgressions. Now let's move on, so that I will not consume all my time. So Jesus said, "Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide." That is. Matthew 3 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter it, enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Those who find the way is few. So Paul preaching to you uh, grace with lasciviousness. Um, it do doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. You know, we are saved by grace. We believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved on your family. Because you believe all your family, they are saved. Da, 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 da. You can eat anything you like. Uh, whatever you see, buy it. Uh, just uh, be considered the conscience of your friend. Count the cost. Why are we not preaching the words of Jesus Christ? 
Why have you so much departed from the truth? God, Paul's word eclipsed the words of Jesus Christ. And the church is following Paul. Look at the condition of the church. Look at the condition of the church. People are robbing people in the name of preaching. People are living lascivious lives. People are living ostensibly. I mean, <clears throat> mega churches, mega riches. Because Paul said, he that preached the gospel will live by the gospel. Anyway, let's talk about what Paul is talking about, total depravity of man. Romans 3, 9, what then, that's Romans 3 from verse 9, what then, are we Jews better off? No, not at all, for I have already charged that all men, both Jews and Greeks, are all under the power of sin. As it is written, none, there is none righteous, no, not one. But there is none that, doing the will of all them, since all has sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Paul is saying, there is no one righteous, no, not one. Everyone is sinner. Everyone is totally depraved. Paul is saying that everybody is totally depraved. No, not one. Including Jesus, John the Baptist, apostles, prophets, Moses, everybody is totally depraved. No, not one. Both the Jews and Gentiles, everybody is completely. Let's see what Jesus said. Jesus says in Matthew 12, 35, The good man out of his good treasure brings forth good fruit, and the evil man out of his evil treasure will have the good man. Okay. And um, Paul, actually in that quotation, misquoted David. David said in Psalm 14, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. It is the fool that David was quoting. The fool is that the one David said is depraved. Not every man, both Jews and Gentiles. David said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord had looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Among the fools have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge. That's what God is saying. I have done, I don't know. Who eats up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? So is there nobody that calls upon the Why the Buddha Paul say that everybody is a sinner? That every, there is none righteous, no, not one. So God concluded everybody by grace. To save everybody, grace. Just believe, grace, 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 gift of grace. Everybody is depraved. There is none righteous, no, not one. Nobody is doing good. David said he's a fool that is depraved. Because they say there is no God. They are not seeking after God. So they are depraved. They don't know anything. They walk in darkness. So on unconditional election. Let's talk about unconditional election. So it depends not upon man's will or exertion, but upon God's mercy. Okay, that's what Paul said. It is on God's mercy, not anybody's. But God said, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evil doers. Now, okay. Now, the reward of the gospel, something like that. Paul says something, 1 Timothy 5, 17 says, Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scriptures say, You shall not muzzle an ox when it treadeth on the grain. The laborer deserves his wage. 1 Corinthians 9, 11 says, If we have sown spiritual good among you, spiritual good among you, it is too much, is it too much if we reap your material benefits? If we sow something spiritual, is it too much if we not if we reap the material benefit? Well, Jesus said to us, and preach as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, please the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. You know, I follow the Lord's example when I go to preach outside after outside America. I do not carry extra cash or whatever. Because Jesus said, 
carrying no pearls, carrying no gold, carrying no silver. So when I go, then the Lord, I said, God, I am doing your work. You will sustain me by yourself. You know how you do it. And he does. God asks us not to worry. He will do his own part. We will do our own part. So, you don't go there and exact the people of everything they have. Follow the rule. There are rules that God gave about offering. Follow that rule. God gave rules. God gave rules on how to provide for his ministers. At one point, the Lord, I went to a very, very remote village in Uganda. And I was after about three days of ministering. The Lord, I said, God, this is like very poor. It is a mud house. And the Lord, how am I going to call? God said to me, they are rich. They have money. They don't know what to do with their money. They are busy in businesses. They don't know what to do. God asked me. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't even know why I didn't follow God's uh, advice. He told me how to make money. That's what to do, what to say. So, I tried, I was scared to say what God asked me to do. God asked me to ask them to ask some of them to sell their land that they would do it. Because they have too much land. I couldn't do it. And I didn't do it. I told the apostle I went to, I said, this is what God is saying. Or, I don't know I'm going to handle this. The apostle said, okay, if some of you can sell cows, sell. Suddenly they came to They gave offering. I think it was like four hundred and something dollars we raised right there at the spot. Very poor people in a mud house. And the Lord told me, asked me to stay in that area. Don't move. So after preaching like that, like two weeks or three weeks, they asked me to rest for one week and then continue. I said, let me, oh, God forgive me. I said, let me use it too because they were calling me in another the western part of Uganda, Mbarara. I said, let me use that one week and go there. God warned me not to go. It was when I was in Entebbe, because I, I spent the night in Entebbe. It was when I was in Entebbe that God said to me, five people sold their land for you. Five people sold their land for you. But you have left. So when I, when, you know, I from there I just went, you know, from there things just, in that, in that Mbarara, things just went ugly because God did not send me there. So I did not follow the Lord's advice. So what I'm trying to say here is, when you follow the Lord, He will lead you. He is the good shepherd. He will lead you to the green pasture. That's as David said, He leads me through the green. He will lead you to the green pasture. He knows where the pasture is. He knows. Just as a shepherd, He knows where you should go. Don't go where God did not ask you to go. You are working for him. He is the good shepherd. He will feed you. He will feed you. That's why he said, carry not post, carry not script, carry not gold and silver. A laborer is worthy of his way. He will provide for you. He knows who to touch. He knows where, if you just follow him. You know? So, you don't go and start taking advantage of people. Using tricks and tongues to make them give you money. You sell stuff. What I mean by selling stuff, because God warned me not to sell my book in his altar, not to do any business. So at times he will ask me to just give them the book, you know, and let them you know if I just do whatever he asks me to do. If he has a way to provide for me, I will do what he asks me to do. If he asks me to use the book to raise money, I do. Whatever he asks me to do, I do. He will ask me, if he asks me to give it free, I will give. But God himself will know how to take care of me. I just, I learn to totally depend on God when I go out ministering. So, I, we have talked about the source of life. That is going on. We have talked about the source of life where Jesus said to the, um, where Jesus said to the, um, the rich young ruler, um, how do you read? How read thy law? The source of life. Jesus already said it that if you shall um okay. Luke ten twenty six to twenty eight. He said unto what is written in the law? How read it? Is? And he answering, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he, Jesus said that he said unto him, 
Thou hast answered right. Do this and thou shalt live. Keep the commandment and you shall live. So Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. The word of God, the picking it out, the spirit and life. Um, Ezekiel 20, say, I gave them your statutes, I showed them my judgment, which if a man do, he shall live in them. But, you know, I, we, have, we have talked about it. Paul said that the commandment brings death to him. Now, let's talk about swearing. Um, Jesus said, concerning swearing oath, Matthew 5, 33 to 37. Again, you have heard that it had said of the Bible, Thou shalt not forswear yourself, but shall perform unto the Lord thy oath. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is full, full, who is full stool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is city of the great king. Neither shall thou swear by your head or anything, anything, but let your communication be yea, yea, no, no. Whatever is beyond yes, yes, no, no, is of the evil one. Your communication must be yes, yes. Um, James said the same thing. Yes, yes, no, no. But let's look at Paul. Paul was full of swearing. Galatians 1, 18 to 20. Then after three years, I went to Jerusalem. He's now talking to the Galatians. To see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none. Save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write to you, behold, before God, I lie not. I lie not. Then I wanted to find out why, why was Paul trying to use oaths to um, convince Galatians? Did they ask him whether he was lying or not? If you go to a, a judge, I remember, I remember talking to a judge in the court one time. I said, you know, to tell you the truth, the judge said, hold on, so you've been lying all along. <laughs> so, see? So, when somebody, so, here yeah, Paul will say, I lie not. If you look at Paul's writings, almost always, always, I lie not, God is my witness. So, why was Paul using, you know, oaths to, Speak his word. So, when he went to that Jerusalem, <laughs> when Paul went to that Jerusalem, in I think it is uh, Acts, is it twenty one or fifteen? They get, I think it was fifteen. They gave him a letter with Silas and all those some people to Antioch, and in that letter. They gave him the line of the things he must teach. Just as I said earlier, Moses and the law, the law and the prophet, they must be read every Sabbath. The law must be read every Sabbath. To teach them not to not to pollute themselves with idols, stay away from blood, um, not eat anything strangled, and um, I don't remember the other one. And then also to be reading law every Sabbath. But Paul went and told them that uh, the only thing they told them, according to Galatians 2.10, he said, only they would, that those apostles in Jerusalem said to them, only they would that we should remember the poor. This thing which I also was forward to do. I, I was forward to do that already anyway. And they asked us just to remember the poor. That's not what they told him. So why was Paul saying, I lie now? The thing I told you, I lie He was lying. That's not what they told him to do in Acts 15. Really true. They didn't tell him that. They told him what to teach. Those letters were to be secluded. That's why the Ephesians rejected him. Then in that very uh, Galatians, I think it was in chapter 2. He started disparaging the apostles that they had nothing to him, that God has no favorite. He, even though they were apostles, they were not better than him. Da 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 da. And he placed himself on their level and said that I work harder than them and all that stuff. Now, let's continue with Paul swearing. Romans one nine. For God is my witness, who myself with the Spirit in the gospel of His Son. That without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayer. God is my witness. Why does he have to always swear when he speaks? I say the truth, I lie not. Romans 9 1. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Why? Moreover, I am I call God for my record upon my soul that to spare you I came not as yet unto current. Say, don't swear by God. 
That's what Jesus said. Don't swear by God, by throne, by anything. Let your so where he was born, whatever I call God as a record um, upon my soul. As the truth now, Second Corinthians eleven ten. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the region of Achaia. Eleven, um, Second Corinthians eleven eleven. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. God knows. The God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forever, knowing that I lie not. Eleven thirty one. Galatians 1 20. Now the things that I write to you, behold, before God I lie not. For God is my record. How greatly I long after you, all the words of Christ. Philippians 1 8. Now let me just move, quickly move. We have established that Paul was a liar and always using oaths, swearing an oath. Jesus asked us not to swear oath. Now, Paul said that all things are permissible to him. I'm not going to go to, to that details. Paul said that all things are lawful, but he would not tell things are expedient. So that's when he said food does not commend us to to God and neither neither does food does not make us good or worse before God. So whatever uh, even if you go to the temple of a voodoo priest, you can eat food but make sure that your brethren does not see you so that you will not the conscience of that person will not become weak because your your conscience is strong so you can eat, you know, just sanctify it by the blood of but God said don't eat it. That deceived me when I was young. Jesus said, Paul said everything is permissible to him. But Jesus said in Revelation 2, 14 to 15, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of Nic Nicolaitan, which I hate. I don't want to go into details of the doctrine of Nicolaitan. So, and the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam is about eating food made to idols. God killed up to 24,000 Israelis because of that. So, then I try to know who are the fellow apostles. Who are the apostles with Paul anyway? Act 14.14. 14, which when the apostles Paul and Barnabas heard of the rain their clothes and ran among the people crying out, there are also other okay crying out. So Paul apostle Barnabas apostle, um, in Romans sixteen seven salute Androsius and Junior my kinsmen, said my fellow prisoner who are not among the apostles. So those are also apostles. But Jesus said in um, Revelation two two. Jesus has only 12 apostles anyway. Revelation 2.2, 2, he said, those who call themselves apostles, but are not, they lie. Paul, no, God, Jesus commended the Ephesian brethren for throwing away Paul, because he's the apostle. To, if you look at Ephesians 1, he's the apostle to the Ephesians. So Jesus commended the Ephesians for rejecting him because of his false doctrine, and for encouraging them to eat food mixed to the idols. The Ephesians tried him and saw that he was lying and they rejected and Jesus commended them and um, called all those apostles, Jesus called them liars, false, evil. Jesus called them evil. So Jesus asked us to deny ourselves and follow him, carry our cross and follow him. So all things are not permissible. He said, deny yourself, follow me. And he asked us to enter through the narrow gate. You know, and the, you know, for a rich man to enter, it will, it will be like. Now, let us talk about cause. Paul placed cause on anyone that will preach the true gospel. Anyone that will preach what Paul did not preach, Paul caused that person. Galatians 1 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there are some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But talk. But though we are an angel of heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So, so say, as we said before, so say I now before. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. Paul is cursing those who are preaching the true gospel, cursing the apostles because the apostles are preaching a different gospel from Paul, cursing anyone that would preach the right thing. And he told the Galatians that the little even living in the whole lump. So those are preaching them to keep the commandments of God that they are they are living. But who is preaching living is actually Paul. He's the one preaching the living gospel. 
not um because a little living Paul was the one preaching, spreading the corruption, you know. So but Jesus said, Bless them that cause you, pray for them which despitefully use you. Jesus will now cause but Paul is causing those who are not who are preaching the true gospel. So Jesus said, This now the preaching of the gospel. Paul called the gospel he's preaching my gospel. Paul called the gospel my gospel. But Jesus is preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for the witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sick and every disease among the people. What gospel is Paul preaching? 2 Timothy 2 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Paul's gospel. It's not the gospel of Christ, so Paul's gospel. Have you heard it now? Okay. Romans 2 16. In the day when God shall draw the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Now let us see the evidence of Paul's gospel. Indeed, I, Paul, that is Galatians 2. 24. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the law, the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. But Jesus said, if you want to keep life, if you want to enter life, keep the law. Paul is saying that you are, you have got away from Christ if you keep the law. But Christ is the law. Christ, Moses wrote of me. Christ is the law. You are falling from grace. Grace and truth came from Christ. Came through Christ. Christ is the grace and the truth. So Christ gave us the law. God gave us the law. And Christ came to fulfill that law on our behalf. And Christ did not fulfill the law. He is bringing the law to the brim. Because he said, if somebody slaps you on the knees and turn this way, if somebody takes your cloak, give him the other one. Um, if you call somebody a fool, you are in danger of hell. If you lost, you already committed adultery in your heart. Jesus was bringing God's law to the fool. I came to fulfill the law. And Jesus, Paul is saying that if you keep the law, you are cut off from Christ. What kind of deception is this? What kind of deception? That's how Paul turned people away from Christ. Now you talk about witnesses. The word of God says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the case is established. If you read in Matthew 18, 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take two or three more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. That is according to law. I don't want to go there because we've taken a lot of time. According to law, you must have two or three witnesses for every case. The, the, the law said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a case is established. That is the law. That's God's law. Now, Jesus is forwarding the law here, you know, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a case is established. Um, now, the Jews said to Jesus that he accused Jesus of, uh, the Pharisees said to accuse Jesus, you bear a record of yourself. Your record is not true. Because if you bear a record of yourself, the record is not true. That's what they say. Jesus I said to them, though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but you cannot tell whence I come. So Jesus now said again, um, John 5, 31 to 33, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which it witnesseth of me is true. You send John, and he bear witness unto truth. John was a foreigner of Jesus. He already bore witness for Jesus. The law and the prophets said, Moses wrote of me. Moses was bearing witness for Jesus. The prophets also bore witness for Jesus. God also bore, during the, the certain baptism of Jesus, <coughs> the law said, this is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Hear him. So, Christ's teachings are in alignment with the law. So, um, who are the writers of the gospel? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four people bearing witness to the testimony of Jesus, of the works of Jesus. Four people. Now, Paul, 
Let's see how Paul do his own weakness. Second Corinthians 13, 1. This is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Paul is the first, coming for the third time. This is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses. Because Paul is the one that came the first time. Paul is the one that came the second time. Paul is the one that came the third time. Now, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a case is established. Hello? Does Paul think we, are, we, we don't know anything? Uh, I mean, where, where have we been? Where have we been all this while? Because we thought it's the Bible. We thought that everything within there is the Bible. Paul said, if any man will not walk, let him not eat. If you don't walk, let him not eat. But the word of God said... Jesus said, um, for the poor shall always cease not out of your land. Um, Deuteronomy 15, 11 says, for the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore, I command thee, saying, thou shalt open your hand wide unto your brother, to your poor, and to thy needy in the land. First John 3, 16, 18 says, hereby perceive with the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. But whosoever has this world's goods, and seeth his brother in need, and shut up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So help your brother. Paul said, he that doesn't walk shall not eat. In the early church, the Bible says in Acts 2.45, they sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, and every man had as everyone has need so there was nobody um that has bigger or little they had a word and the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and one soul neither said any man that ought of the things which he possessed was his own but they all had things in common and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them on apostles feet and distribution was made unto every man according to his need the paul was a tent maker preacher and he said if anybody that will, will not walk do not eat i want to stop here i know i have gone been a long you know comparison i want you to remember that isaiah 28 god said that those who will not listen to the truth because i lay in zion a foundation stone a stumbling stone jesus it's you know Jesus will be, and he said, this is the race wherewith you might cause the weary to race, and they say we will not hear. So if you will not hear, you are going to hear Paul. If you will not hear the word of Jesus, you will hear the word of Paul. That's what Jesus said, the word of God said in Isaiah. And you said you have made agreement with hell. Agreement, Saul, Saul's name, in Pablo Hebrew, Saul, hell is called Sheol. Saul, Sheol are the same thing. It's the same. Paul is hell. So, making agreement with Paul, that is following Paul, because Paul broke the covenant. God has, God's covenant with man is the word of God. Jesus Christ. The law of God. That is the covenant. I will make a new covenant with them. That's the covenant. Paul broke it. And showed us another way he went to hell and the same paul said with all the severe bonus himself if they will not love to embrace the truth that god will send them strong delusion to believe lie for their own destruction strong delusion can we read it let's read it because my heart is saying we should read it Strong delusion. God will send them strong delusion. Delusion. That is second second Thessalonians two eleven. 
And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That is, if they don't, let's read it um, to 11. Let's read from 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of truth, that they might be saved. The truth will save you. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Paul is saying it about himself here, that God will cause them to embrace a delusion, that they should believe a lie. God will send them a strong delusion to believe a lie, that they all might be damned. Paul is hellfire. That's his name. His name is Saul. Saul is hellfire. Saul in Hebrew is hell. In Pablo Hebrew is hell. Saul is hell. It's something that crushes. Something that crushes. Something that kills. Saul is hell. Both Saul in the Old Testament, um, King Saul, and this one, they're killers. Herodian, my Herodian kinsmen are killers. Herodians are the kinsmen of Paul. Paul Herod tried to kill Jesus, he beheaded John, killed James, and tried to kill Peter. But the brethren in Acts 12, the brethren delivered. And Paul said, was bold to say that, greet my Herodian case, man. I did that in my face. So my people, please forget about Paul and his teachings. It's like a cobweb. I sense it in my spirit. It's hard for me to turn away from Paul. As I'm, Every time I'm meditating on the word of God, I realize... I am so much entangled with Paul and his false doctrine, and I'm trying to break off everything. Spiritually, Paul was, he called himself a, a, a master builder. And Jesus is the chief cornerstone. So Paul called himself a master. That's what he is. Master builder of another religion. He, the Roman Catholic, they are, they are established according to Paul. After Paul hated women. Women ministry and Jesus women minister to him. Mary Magdalene was the one that Jesus saw when he was raised from the dead. But when Paul wanted to give account of resurrection, he started with the gods of Cephas and 500 men. He removed Mary Magdalene because he doesn't want a woman to keep silent in the church. That's not what Jesus said. Anna was a prophet, a prophetess in the house of God from seven years from her virginity or whatever since her husband died Anna was a prophetess Deborah was a prophetess a leader in Israel a prophetess a judge Esther you know, all those people God used them live Paul. he was an antichrist God bless you in Jesus name Amen and Amen